Okay, welcome back. Um, in this video, we are going to discuss about the minimum sampling frequency or the maximum digital frequency. So, so far, we the relationships that we have derived when we are doing the time frequency indexing and um, all the derivations. So, we used to go up to the uh, when we take the Fourier transform. I used to represent Fs as the complete range. But now, um, in this video, we will see that, well, um, we do not need to represent up to Fs. And Fs by 2 is sufficient enough to represent all the relevant frequencies that are contained in my analog signal. Okay? So, um, in order to explain this, I will take a small um, uh, numerical example um, so that we can understand this concept better. So, here I have, um, I have got a small script. Okay? There is nothing complicated about this. All I am saying is that I have got a sinusoid of 1 hertz frequency which means that I'm going to have one full cycle of the sinusoid correct uh, in one second and I am going to have the sampling frequency Fs is equal to okay to start with I will make it as um, let's say I'm making it as 16 times F so I'm saying that I'm going to pick up 16 samples out of my sinusoidal signal right so sampling time we have already discussed the sampling time is inverse of the sampling frequency Right, and the discrete time running, so n times t, this is a running index, and I'm plugging into the cos function, and I'm doing the plotting. Okay, so let's see um, what happens when we run this. Okay. So, this is how it looks like. So this is the first sinusoid. Let me try to bring it into the capture zone. So this is the sinusoid. I have taken five cycles, um, five cycles of sinusoid um, in the capture, and... Um, the frequency is actually one cycle per second. So this point is one second. This point is um, this is the cosine function. So this point this point is one second. This is two second, three second, four second, and five seconds. Okay, and I am taking eight times. I am taking sixteen times. So it means that in per cycle, per cycle, I am going to have sixteen samples. As you can see, I have got eight samples here and eight samples here. Now, now let's see what happens when I reduce um, when I reduce the sampling frequency. So let's say I am making it as eight. Okay, so now what it says is that I'm going to pick up eight samples from the sinusoid. And let's see what happens if I run this code. So um, let's open the console. And let's see. So now as you can see, um, the number of points are less, right? So now I am having eight samples. So um, you can see this, this is four and then two and two, right? It is a cosine function. So that makes eight samples per cycle. But still, I'm able to represent the sinusoid pretty well. Let's say um, we are going to reduce our frequency even further. And uh, let me make this thing as 4. Okay, so now it is 4 times. So I'm saying here that I'm going to take only 4 samples out of the full cycle. And if I run this guy, what happens? Let's see. Um, okay, so this is what it looks like. But still, I am able to see some sort of a sinusoid, right? Um, which is terribly undersampled, but still I can uh, figure it out that, okay, it looks a bit of a sinusoid. But uh, it is not a perfect sinusoid. So now we are entering the zone where it becomes difficult to figure out whether actually it is a sinusoid or some triangular function. Okay, now let us um, reduce the frequency even further. Okay, let us reduce the frequency even further, the sampling frequency. So I'm only picking up two samples out of the complete cycle. And if I do this, then what happens? Okay, let's check it out. So if I do this, then, as you can see, um, now I only have one sample in one uh, one sample per half cycle. So for the full cycle, I'm only going to have two samples. Okay, I have two samples uh, per cycle, two samples, two samples, two samples, and goes like that. Now what happens if I reduce it even further? Let's make this thing as one. Okay, and let's see what happens. So here, as you can see, now we have lost the signal completely. Okay, so what it tries to say is that the maximum frequency, the range of the frequencies or the sampling frequency that I, uh, or the minimum sampling frequency that I can take has to be minimum two times the original frequency. Or it means that I should be able to pick up at least two samples um, from the original frequency in order to somehow make sense out of my sample signals. Okay, somehow make sense. This point is very important. So in this context, so um, what we can see here is that, well, Fs has to be equal to two times F, right? So, uh, so from this example, what we can say is that my sampling frequency F, Fs, 
right? It should be at least twice the analog frequency f. This is the fundamental relationship, okay, that um, we are going to discuss about. So fs is equal to 2 times f. Now, if I do a bit of manipulation and try to represent it in some other way, um, I can also say, so what I am saying here, this is the minimum, okay, this is the minimum sampling frequency. This is the minimum sampling uh, frequency um, that I can have to make the sense. Or um, if I do represent this thing in uh, some other way, so let us say I'm representing it as a ratio. So f by fs, so that is equal to half, right? That is equal to half. And this f by fs is sometimes, or the most of the times I should say, um, in the literature, it is represented by the digital frequency. Although the notation is different, I'm just putting f with small d here, but um, just to avoid the confusions between the analog and the digital domain. Um, so what I'm saying is that the frequency in the digital frequency or the digital scaled uh, analog scale frequency with fs is equal to half. So um, this is the maximum. Okay, this is the maximum uh, frequency. Although it is isn't, it is not a frequency. It is scaled out. Okay, it is just a number. Um, but just for the sake of understanding, and people sometimes use it as a frequency also. So the maximum frequency that I'm, this is the maximum frequency, I cannot go beyond this, right? And it is true equally in the negative direction as well, okay? So if I, uh, if I sample it, uh, although it is not possible, but in numerical sense, numerical sense, we can say that, well, okay, uh, I cannot go beyond plus and minus half, okay, plus or minus half. So this is plus or minus 2. So fs is plus or minus 2 times f, and fd is plus or minus half. If I want to represent it in terms of the radians, then it's uh, I can call it as omega d. And omega d is you multiply it by 2 times pi here, right? So plus or minus pi. So there are three relationships, okay? This is the first relation. This is the second. And this is the third one. And all three represent one and the same thing. And what they mean is that, well, I cannot have the sampling frequency. Um, less than uh, two times the analog frequency. That is the thing in order to represent. If I go beyond that, then it will be simply with the image. Now, when we do this representation in the frequency domain, if you remember that in our previous videos, what we had done, um, we used to put the final point here as fs, right? And uh, if I have the end point f of t, so this point was n, and we used to represent the signals like this, and say nothing wrong with this, but from this explanation, what it says is that all the frequencies, my analog frequency f, okay, um, right, so let me explain this in terms of the analog frequency, okay, so what it means here is that f is equivalent to plus or minus half of fs, fs, right, so when my analog frequency becomes half the sampling frequency, analog frequency becomes half the sampling frequency, that is my limit. So let us say that I have some sinusoidal signal. Um, the tone is somewhere sitting here. And so this, if this is fs, this is my fs by 2. Okay, This is my fs by 2. f is equal to fs by 2. f equals to fs. So all the frequencies which are, all the analog frequencies which are going above this, okay, they, they are not actually important to us. They are simply the image. So when we do the Fourier transform representation, all the frequencies that we are going to take will be between 0, uh, zero to fs by 2. Okay. So without losing any generality, when we did the discussion of uh, deriving the time frequency relationship of um, f times t, having the equivalence relationship as k times n by capital N, um, this relationship will still hold. Okay. And the reason is because um, I'm moving here to fs by 2 at the same time the number of samples I'm going to take is also getting reduced, right? This is half of n. This is half of n. So they will cancel out and eventually I will get this relationship. So without losing any of the generality in our previous derivations, um, we can now represent all the required frequencies at up to the range of fs by 2 rather than up to fs in the Fourier transform. Okay, so with this understanding, we will go and discuss about the downsampling and effect of downsampling in the frequency domain in our next video. So, see you in the next video.